How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're going to be finishing my cheap Lamborghini's stripped interior and also fixing a fuel leak that could burn the car to the ground. So we should probably get to that first. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys like it. This is my 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider and it has seen some better days, uh, especially the interior. The interior is not here at the moment. I have stripped it to expose some of the wiring, the hydraulic mess back here for the convertible top and to make sure that I get rid of one big problem that's been kind of on my nerves for the last few weeks and it is a fuel leak. A fuel leak on this car is very bad, actually way worse than it would be on a normal car because the fuel tank and the engine are very, very close together. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to find the source of the leak and then we're going to stop the leak to make sure that this thing never goes up in flames again because yes, this car was on fire in the past. So when I say find the source of the leak, I already know where the leak is coming from. It's coming from this side of the fuel tank. There's two halves of the fuel tank, one here and one on the passenger side of the car. And there's two fuel pumps. There's essentially two fuel tanks and they're just one tube connecting them both. This side, when filled all the way up to the brim with fuel, it leaks from the top. And I need to know whether it's a fitting. I need to know whether it's the plastic itself that's cracked down here. And uh, I just need to know that it's good to go for the many miles that I plan to put on this car. So what we're gonna do right now is I have to just take this top off, this blue anodized thing down here. We're gonna just take the uh, Torx bolts, actually they're not Torx bolts, they're Allen bolts. Take the Allen bolts off and then pull the entire assembly out. Hopefully I have enough space to do that. And then we're gonna inspect this plastic piece right here to make sure that there's no cracks in it. And if there are, we have to repair them. And then we're gonna install our new fittings to make sure that this never happens again. All right, so here is the assembly for the fuel pump and fuel level sender. And this is identical from the left to the right, but this is gonna be our culprit. When I had the car in the on position and the fuel tank was, uh, while well, the fuel pump was running, I saw that fuel would just collect right here in this little bowl. So that means that there's probably no cracks here on the, uh, the housing itself. Uh, there's no internal cracks and it certainly doesn't look like it, but it does mean that there's a leak when uh, it gets pressurized. So it's either the feed line or the return line. And we're gonna be replacing both of these guys. And the way I'm doing it is instead of having a return line that has a 90 degree fitting like this, this is a uh, six AN fitting. I'm just gonna get a bulkhead fitting that just goes straight out. And then we can use a regular 90 that kind of protrudes a little bit more and uh, makes it a little bit easier to install. Also this one, I'm just taking out completely. This is the feed line and I'm replacing it with this. This is an uh, 8AN uh, bulkhead fitting. And on the other side, it's a barb fitting that we can actually connect to the hose right here going to the fuel pump. So this is gonna be really useful in uh, connecting everything. All we have to do is now take this off, lop this off, and there's like a little gunk here. I don't know what this is from, maybe a previous install. Uh, I need to take this out because that's not looking very good. Maybe we can plastic weld that. And then uh, we can put everything back and hopefully this shouldn't leak. Now, before I uh, start doing modifications to this, I do have to say that when you put these on, uh, make sure to put some uh, thread sealant or some uh, blue Loctite in the threads because you don't want this coming off, especially in the fuel tank. It's just gonna create lots and lots of issues. So we're gonna make sure everything is tight and then we're gonna put it on the car. And then we're gonna have to do a few more modifications because this 8AN fitting, it actually is not in the right place for the fuel line that I have in the car. So we're gonna have to make a whole new fuel line. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get to the uh, interior um, rebuild today, but uh, I definitely wanna get this sorted because this is kind of more important. I don't want the car bursting into flames.
Okay, now all these holes are drilled and this one I actually drilled out. This one's supposed to be filled in. The way we're gonna fill it in is using something called a plastic welder. This is a plastic welder and it looks like a soldering iron because that's basically what it is. I picked this up from Harbor Freight and what it does is it has this iron looking thing and uh, it just presses down with a lot of heat uh, whatever you want to weld together uh, that's plastic. So since we have a little bit of a gap here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this. We're gonna kind of do a skin graft. This little piece that I cut off earlier, since this is exactly the same type of plastic as the rest, I'll just cut a little piece, put it over, and then we'll just weld this all together. It'll just melt uh, together and it'll be one strong piece. All right, so we got everything plumbed up and it's looking pretty good. You can see the new inlet and outlet for the fuel or feed and return. So we just have everything like it was before. I actually cinched some of this down with uh, some zip ties and made sure that we don't have any sort of protrusions from the top. The way it's gonna work is, let's just pretend like this is a hose end for the 8AN and that's just gonna go like this. See, there's plenty of space to uh, go over this, this ledge right here. And then the same goes for this dash six. And it's gonna go just like that. Now the issue with my car is that I don't have the, uh, the hose for the feed. It's not long enough. So I'm gonna have to take out that hose. I'm gonna have to snake it in behind the firewall, actually behind the fuel tank in front of the firewall. And then I'm gonna have to make a custom hose uh, with some fittings that I have and then I'm gonna have to take it back and then connect it and then we'll try it and then hopefully this doesn't leak. Also, if you guys heard some noise in the background, it's that, it's, it's rain. Okay, that only took quite a long time. It's actually nighttime already, but I got the fuel line out, and as you can see, it's not exactly what uh, we'd call efficient. Now, when I started doing this fuel system quite a long time ago, I wanted to make sure that everything uh, was one diameter as far as the feed and return. The return tends to be a little bit smaller, so that's why it's a dash six. The feed is a dash eight. Now, this is, uh, well, I'm not gonna say that this was done haphazardly, but since it had a stock connector right here, I thought that this little length of hose, it's probably three inches or so, uh, that should be okay for flow. It's not going to uh, hinder anything. But now, uh, now that we have the correct fitting on the tank itself, we're gonna have this length of hose, this diameter of hose, all the way. So I just have to measure this, and then I'm gonna have to make the custom stainless steel hose to test our fuel system. Now, the other side, oddly enough, doesn't have this. It actually does have the correct fittings, but I'm gonna check that side anyway, just in case it's leaking. I don't think it is because I did check it uh, with the black light with my UV dye and it all is checked out fine, but I'm gonna do it anyway uh, after we do this one because I don't want any flow problems and I certainly don't want any fuel leaking. So the really cool thing about these lines is that even though they are a really good tight fit, they can still be taken apart. So all I need is two adjustable wrenches. Now the adjustable wrenches aren't exactly the right way to do it. You're supposed to have aluminum uh, AN wrenches, but I don't have any of those. And adjustable wrenches should be just fine. I do scratch them up just a little bit, but this is not gonna be seen by anybody. Uh, plus I just wanna make sure that everything is good. So why not use the big stuff? Just undo it like that and it should come right off. Now I have to take both fittings off. Actually, I only have to take this fitting off and then we're gonna put it on a new length of hose so we can 
get it to the exact measurement we need and we'll simplify the entire fuel line. So if you guys were a little fuzzy on what I just did, I'm gonna go through with you step by step how to make your own custom braided AN hose. And you can use these on vacuum, fuel, oil, anything basically. Uh, it's meant to uh, take on and off as many times as you want. It doesn't have any weird uh, rubber connections, uh, nothing like that. It's just an aluminum fitting and it's a press fit. So you can pick up the stainless steel hose and the corresponding ends to fit your application at uh, Amazon or any speed shop and uh, they're pretty easy to put on. So here's how you do it. This is a regular hose end. This is uh, actually a dash eight. So it's in two pieces. This is the collar and this is what you screw into the collar. Now you take your length of hose, and I always put a little bit of tape, it doesn't matter if it's electrical tape or masking tape or whatever, I would just put a little bit of tape on uh, where you're cutting because you don't want the frayed stainless steel ends uh, to go everywhere, you don't want it to balloon out, you want it to stay nice and compact. So after that, you take your tape off, then you place your collar over, and there is a little bit of resistance sometimes, but now it's going on pretty simply. So. You can see, I'm not sure, actually you, you guys probably can't see. Um, so it should go all the way up to the threads. You don't want it going into the threads, but just there is perfectly fine. So this then goes in here. Actually before that, I always like to give it a little bit of WD-40. Some people say you shouldn't do this, uh, and some people say you should. I give it a little bit of lubrication, not a lot. Um, it should be enough just to start it. And then you just start screwing this in. Now, once you've got it about two threads or so, just to make sure that uh, the fitting is in there, I go over with some tape again, but right where the fitting meets the hose. So you wanna do it right here, because when you tighten this down, you don't want this hose coming out. You don't want this pushing out. So you wanna make sure that it's staying within uh, the same relation to the collar. So then you just take your adjustable wrench or open-ended wrench or AN aluminum wrench, and then you just tighten this down all the way. Now the way I cut this, you can do it a few ways as well. You can cut it with a uh, specialized cutter, uh, kind of like a pliers or like a PVC cutter. Uh, it just cuts really quickly. Or what I used is a uh, bandsaw. I use a portable bandsaw and it makes pretty good cuts as well. You can actually cut it with a Dremel or a reciprocating saw. I probably wouldn't do that just because there's a lot of vibration and uh, a lot of ways you can mess it up. But uh, the cleaner the cut, the better. You want it as perpendicular as possible. Now I've done this a bunch on this car. I have redone all the lines, the oil lines, the fuel lines, all that stuff on this car. So I've, I, I know how to do this. But uh, just in case you guys didn't know, now you know. Also, after you have everything done and you have your hose ready, you wanna take off the tape because, well, green tape doesn't look very good. And then you wanna go over it with some compressed air because all those uh, metal shavings that you cut, they're still in the hose. So you wanna get rid of that because you definitely don't want that going in your fuel or oil or wherever. So put some compressed air in one side, blow it out for like 10 seconds, and you should be good to go. Uh, it's also good to maybe run some water through it just, uh, just in case there's something trapped in there. But uh, I can't wait to get this on the car and try it out. Man, this is, this is taking a little longer than I thought. All right, so this is a little bit of a work in progress. Apparently, when I put everything together, I was missing an O-ring. And um, these don't usually need O-rings, but the nylon washers were just not enough. It was just leaking all over the place. But with an O-ring, it actually 
actually is uh, pretty dry. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I do know that the gas tank is filled to the brim right now. This is the moment of truth. I'm just gonna turn on the fuel pumps and uh, we'll see if we have any leakage. And here goes nothing. Oh yeah, look at that. No leakage to speak of. That is awesome. And it looks pretty good too. You have the eight and six AN fittings there. It's all nice and clean. And it's not exactly hard to get to. I mean, we do have to take off a lot of the uh, rear panels, but it's better than taking out the engine. So I know this for next time. So that, is a job done. So we got that done and we are a little bit closer to getting our interior done and getting our car done. Now the interior uh, I will be doing in the next episode in addition to other stuff. So uh, we're not just gonna have an episode about interior, we're gonna have an episode about interior, uh, some outside, maybe even the engine bay, and uh, that will be buttoning everything up so it's 100% like I did the front end, uh, just so we don't have to touch it anymore. And this was a really, really big step in doing that. So now I don't have to worry about this car bursting into flames and ruining this awesome paint job. But I think I'm gonna end it there. It is pretty late. I have been at this all day and there are a lot of fumes. Actually, I took a lot of takes to get this done. Um, the fumes aren't great. I have my AC going, so there's a little bit of ventilation here, but uh, I, I better get inside before I start getting really loopy. So if you'd like to contact me, you can do so at the Real Tavares. that's Instagram and Twitter, facebook.com slash askTavarish nastavars at gmail.com. All those social links will be down below. If you'd like to listen to me talk about cars and car culture, you can listen to the Car Guys Talk podcast link down below. But until next time, this is me telling you that on cars like this that now serve no more fire damage risk, well, no more than usual, you guys need to wrench every day.